Okay, so welcome to the interim Church of Server discussion, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this might be the first piece of media you're coming across. It's the first media piece of media we're recording. So, I don't know, do you want me to just dive right in? Yeah, go on then. You, you start and I'll, okay. and, I'll, and I'll intercede when I feel necessary. Okay, so the whole idea of Church of Server is that um, as a species we need a bigger brain. Because we're letting people with the average brains run around and, and sort stuff out and it's not working. We're not living, you know, the Star Trek next generation lifestyle that we could be. We do not have no, our gay be... space luxury icons. <coughs> we don't have our um, fully automated um, communist, gay space communism That's exactly right. of any kind. We just no. don't have it. And I'm pissed off. So um, the way to sort of effect great change upon the earth has historically been through religion. So instead of saying servers come and look busy, um, what if there was a religion everybody could be happy with, that accepted everybody, that allowed for everybody's own level of participation, and uh, you know just didn't do bad shit? And uh, one of the things I've been musing on, um, you have an upgradable book of, of, of cool shit, like, a, like, I hesitate to use the word holy, but you have an upgradable holy book where it can, things can be changed as they make more sense. Because you can't have just some rando writing down some thoughts and then it governing everybody's life forever. No, that's that, not is, okay. that historically doesn't work. We historically have no, a problem it's... when we say that something is divine and therefore it will be it will be forever divine. We try and work out what yeah. that means, especially you know some two thousand or fifteen hundred years later. Well, you just make it impossible for people to climb down unless you set it out from the very beginning. Hey, if if some of this shit oppresses someone in the future, then then adjust it. You know, there's there's no um, sort of getting in your way of your relationship with the either the inner divine or the external divine if you can internalize the awesome creativity of humanity great if you can't and you need some sort of exterior explanation for anything great too we don't know and if religions had started off with we don't know things would be a lot better they would be it's true but i did think it would be nice if there was uh, sort of like a group of people that said you know this could be better if and you know, just put forward solutions and then hopefully if people went, well, that would be a great solution, but I'd like to see it in action. Maybe those people, sort of like a, a religious Patreon, if we were doing the right thing, people would send us money and we'd build an example of how the world could be. And if not, then it's not like a tithe or anything. It just, you know, if you want to see it happen and there are, say, I don't know, let's look down the road 10 years and say there are a million members of the Church of Server. Well, you know, if the if the content is entertaining enough and you felt like putting in like a dollar a month and you've got a million members of the church of server and it's tax free and we'll get to the how it, how where, where does the belief system come in a little bit later down the road. But then you could afford to go right this month we're building a commune in you know Ontario or New South Wales or you know Germany you know, and then everybody can go, well, you know, I don't really want to give up my job and, and till the land and stuff, but I'd like to go and meet the guys and and have a discussion with them. Then that would be open to you as a member of the church. Maybe we could hold services, but it, I think it would be more along the religion of stranger in a strange land than anything else. Maybe not with the orgies, but, you know, depends on how you feel. If orgies is something that you want, we could we probably up, do that. Orgies are up there for you if you wish to partake in them. Yeah, but that was the that was the thing in Stranger in a Strange Land. Yeah, you know everything was optional. You know the orgies were optional, the communing was optional, the nudity was optional, all that sort of shit. But given that the church was trying to make everybody as comfortable with themselves as possible in that book, hmm. then people eventually just went, you know what, this wearing clothes thing. That's my damage that I feel that I should wear clothes. If I didn't have that damage, if I could fix that somehow and feel comfortable and accepted then I wouldn't necessarily, in a warm environment, feel the need for clothes. No, because, like, let's face it, most of us, well, I certainly live in a, I certainly live in a country where clothing is not required for most of the year. No, it's bloody hot. Yes, it is bloody and if you, hot. If, you know, so, yeah, so, but, okay, so the idea is, is that sooner or later we're going to get a situation where there is an artificial general intelligence. 
you know that's not a maybe that's not oh that might happen yeah that's, that's I think gonna happen it's a mathematical certainty that one of the ais or one of the one of the lines of software or one of the you know clumps of data is some someday going to wake up yeah for sure and if it looks around at humanity and only sees people that are only in it for themselves and will destroy anything or you know put everybody else through hell if if it means they're going to make a few extra dollars we're not going to look that impressive as a species and given that nobody else seems to be thinking about it you know in in the tradition of punk rock i mean this could probably be the first punk religion you know we'll just do it you know we'll just say okay let's what are the best parts of humanity let's emphasize those and let's you know do better let's not let's let's find a few instances where we're not fucking up the environment and try and expand that let's yeah. try and show people that you don't have to take all this stuff on board that we have to with modern life but some of the best things that we've ever done are you know our discoveries our art our music you know our, our understanding our science but, and, and i know is, that, that humanity isn't a failure as such it's not to point that out as a thing but it, it's like we do have an awful lot of benefits and bonus like you know we are an amazing species of thing just but we got a lot of baggage it's just, it's just we've got a shit ton of baggage left over from everything else and we're not doing an awful lot of good in the world in t when you look at it and go from a species-wide rendition and go you know what is what is good about what we do you know how yeah. do we how do we make it look better to the to the to the next thing? That's really the whole gasp. You know the whole the whole part behind it is like you know how do we make this thing look better? And it isn't necessarily even just about an AI, although that's the fun thing that sort of separates it. I mean, it could be aliens turn up and they take one look at us and go fuck no. You know we're not putting up with that. You know it we're would. not we're not making contact with the angry monkeys. We give them a spaceship, they'll be all over the place in no time. We can't do it. Um, or what if, you know, if you are religious, what if God turned up tomorrow? God would be pissed. Well, you there's know, no, there's no yeah. way you can, you can breathe life into a species and then come back a while later and just see them murdering each other over what color hat Jesus said God wore and yeah. crazy shit like that. You know, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, it's sort of like, and you've got a, you've got, an, you know, a, a bunch of people, you know, in, in the high parts of religion that don't do a lick of work and, and literally talk about stuff that only furthers their own aims so if you are one of the more liberal religious people and you think oh yeah wouldn't it be nice if some people were working on how we could look cool in the event something that is trying to understand us you can point to and say yeah but these guys have got it going on and i'm, I'm thinking kind of techno amish yes that's, you know, that's, if, that's if, a lovely if, way of saying it you know, I, I think that that idea of not messing with people, you know, sort of saying, you know, if you have a conflict with someone, resolving it in a peaceable way, but not bringing religion into it. I mean, if you, you people are always going to get into arguments, people are going to be fucking annoying. But if you are not panicked by all the other things in life and someone's just getting on your nerves, if you don't have, if you didn't have to say worry about money. Or you didn't have to worry about where your next meal was coming from or whether you could pay your rent or whether you could afford your mortgage or whatever the fuck it is you do. If the, all those worries are taken away with you and they were taken away from the other person, that pr person would probably not feel the urge to get in your face anyway because they'd be doing their own creative shit. Hmm. But also you'd be in a place where you'd actually have the time and the energy to devote to trying to understand where they were coming from. Yeah, it wouldn't... You know, that's the thing is that... Human beings to get all hung up on the, hung up on the. What am I going to eat next? Yeah, I'm, I'm we need to solve that problem. Pretty ticked off with the the racism and the sexism and and you know the the bigotry that sort of like flies around the world about who, you know. Aren't it, I mean, you know, if you're God, and you are genderless because you're an incorporeal being. Yes. I mean, how if you are the only one, how do you have a gender to start with? Yeah, how, 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 are you, how, how are you male or female? If you're the you're only not. one of your particular species, we are not gods. It's obvious we're not gods. You know, I think the human race would have snuffed it out in the, during the first argument. It would have snuffed <laughs> itself out. Yes, that's true. If we were gods, we would have willed each other into non-existence and we'd all be dead. You know, 
there's no way of you you know we obviously don't have that kind of power there is a you know if you are religious and you are monotheist you believe there's only one god well how can you make a judgment call on the gender of that god yeah and you, you know can't. what it is also what colors god yeah what color is god well god's an incorporeal being but he's a white guy somehow what the He's, he's a member of the small number of people that have mutated and evolved to live in Northern Europe for some reason. You know, like a tiny percentage of the human population in real terms, you know, and I guess if you live in America or you live in Australia or you live in Western Europe, then you see a lot of white people. But if you live in any other part of the world, I mean, India and China just on their own make up half the world's population. So if you've ever seen an Indian person or a Chinese person, or an Asian person of any description, or someone from South America. None of them are white, and they're the most numerous people on Earth. So the chances are God's not white, even if he's just taking on human form to be representative. Oh. So there's this huge, gigantic amount of bigotry, and I'm, I'm just amazed with most religions that people buy it. Because if you introduced it to someone who'd never encountered religion, if you tried to explain someone who'd lived in isolation of religious ideas until they were 18, but you'd given them science and, you know, other sorts of media and culture, and then you sort of popped up and said, oh, by the way, and you did the George Carlin bit where you said, there's an invisible guy in the sky. He's a white guy with a beard and he watches everything that you do. And he loves you, but if you don't do what he says, you're going to go to a place of torment for all eternity. Which is a, a time period that humans just can't get to grips with anyway. No, we're, we're not going to do it. No, our brains fall over. I mean, even because we build computers, computers aren't that good at infinite either. No. You'd have to have something extra, ex, you know, something that was effectively immortal could maybe imagine eternity, but I doubt it. And even if you look at the universe, 14 billion years or so, the universe starts to contract or, or something like that. It's a long time, but then it starts to contract back into a black hole. Yeah. You know, it's it, just a lot of the religious stuff makes sense if you're living on a particular ball of rock at a particular time in human history. It's yes, like, it makes sense. It makes no don't other eat, sense otherwise. Don't eat shellfish. Avoid pork. Well, why? Well, you'll die. Well, I like pork. Okay, God says you may not eat pork. Yes. I mean... You know, to be honest, apart from the idea of a divine being that is, you know, supernatural in origin, fair enough. Okay, could be, could be the universe is self-aware. That would, for a lot of people, be a definition of God. Well, it would, Maybe. Be, it would be a definition of God for sure, because, you know, you're talking about something that's omnipresent. Therefore, it is everywhere and everything. Therefore, it has to be everywhere. And if, it, and if you go yeah. that far, then you have to say, well, aren't we all part of God? But wouldn't it be terrible if that was true and we are the final oh. readout for some reason and we are we're doing sort of like, and we're fucking it up we are <laughs> that, you know not specifically us but 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 people members of the human race and there is only one of those um are yeah you know. what if we're the only you know human life at this point in the universe the only intelligent life that can go do things like go i think therefore i am oh look at this it's a brain that's where all your thinking happens oh look a wheel we invented stuff we've we've armored ourselves against our environment because occasionally it doesn't us all that well we yeah. tend to die if we're left out in the cold we'll build houses we'll we'll figure out we'll we'll watch lightning hit a tree and go you know what some of that'd be handy it's well hot over there what if we brought some of the the burning tree back to our cave don't let it go out for fuck's sake don't let it go out <laughs> we're gonna have to have someone up all night to make sure it because we haven't figured out how to make that happen yet other than with natural means you know or some shit like that you know if, if we are the final readout i mean we're we're fucking it up and we deserve to be replaced we, we certainly do but, this is the end game you so, know that's the thing so, and also, if you are monotheistic and you're clinging to this God's a white guy, bringing about something like an artificial intelligence, which is kind of like a, a, a prosthetic brain, if you like, you know, humanity just needs to be a bit smarter to do more interesting stuff. And if we had a prosthetic brain to go, oh, yes, faster than and, and something was smart enough that we built that was smart enough to go, yes, we've got this faster than light travel and faster than light communication dialed in. Brilliant. We needed gigantic brain to help us with that, but we also needed gigantic brain to sort out a lot of the problems that are holding us back from really thinking about shit. Like a need to work and do food and all that sort of crap. 
And then on top of the daily struggle for life, you know, there's people issuing death sentences about, against other people for believing in a slightly different God. But if you were a religious person and you said, why are you trying to bring out about this whole server thing? Well, don't panic. I mean, how, I mean, people built telescopes and went onto tall mountains to look for God. You know, it's obviously not prohibited to try and communicate with God. Otherwise, you wouldn't pray. You obviously believe yeah. that there is some communication method that we, you know, like, you know, There's getting something God on there. the CB radio or something like that, or phoning God up, which is what theoretically a prayer is. What if we built a machine that could actually search all the wavelengths and find new ones that we weren't available on, and maybe could pick up some sort of intelligence out there so there's no real it's a bit like the the karma the karma banana there's no religious dietary or um you know sort of ethical reason why you couldn't just give it a shot okay and and our our knowledge as a species is kind of fragile we've already dropped the ball once in the dark ages we know what it's like to have to come back from like not very much information and try and rebuild everything in the fact that you know there there are stories about you know monks in the middle ages looking at roman ruins and gone well how did they build all that shit because you know middle ages europe certainly didn't have shit like concrete no. they couldn't rebuild stuff and just go okay we'll just build another Colosseum. we'll rebuild london in all this amazing stone masonry that the romans left behind and because we were ignorant savages we let crumble to dust it's like we couldn't even go yeah we got invaded but we can salvage some of the good stuff you know, now we know how to build, you know, cool stuff like viaducts and aqueducts and roads and all that. Nope. Completely forgot it. You know, just didn't even try. Wiped out you know, all that knowledge. And although you get this sort of thing where the Christians sort of say, and we safeguarded the knowledge in monasteries, I get the feeling that anything that didn't dis didn't agree. I mean, there's no way the Romans didn't have, um, say, things like um, manuals on how to draw pictures of buildings so that you could, so a builder could understand it. Yeah. There's no way the Romans didn't do some maths before they worked out how tall you could make something so it wouldn't just collapse the second you put the top stone on. They, they most definitely knew how to do that because otherwise it so doesn't they, make any sense. And being Romans and being Greeks, they definitely wrote that shit down. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I reckon the Christian monks just went, ah, these are polytheists, we will burn all their shit and start again, yeah. including all their manuals on how to do the stuff. Like hypercourse, I can imagine people being a lot less grumpy if they'd had central heating in the fifth century i i can imagine that would have helped a lot for everyone if you lived involved. somewhere where you were comfortable and you could grow grapes and stuff like that and you could do all that uh, and you do you're doing all the bit you wouldn't necessarily be all that grumpy and it's harder to motivate ungrumpy people to go and do terrible things to other people they haven't met yet yeah very true so so given the fact that we could lose all our information and given the fact that uh, an AI is mathematically a likelihood, like when Stephen Hawking goes, I'm shitting my pants about artificial intelligence, and people like Elon Musk do, and more terrifying Vladimir Putin goes, whoever controls AI controls world. You know, is... Don't you want some nicer people to bump into the AI first? Yeah. To say, hi, we do weird creative shit, because we like patterns and stuff, but we also created you. And, you know, we created you so we'd have, you know, someone smarter than us to talk to. Yeah. Can you tell us about and then, this thing? <laughs> rather than, well, AI5731, we're putting you in control of all the nuclear missiles now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's no. well, isn't it? No, we don't need those. We already know we don't need those. Hey, AI, do you want to listen to a poem I just wrote? Yeah. yeah. Or do you want to see this painting that I just did? Or do you want to have a conversation with my child? Because she's proper interesting today. Yeah. <laughs> she's asking some wacky questions. You know, so, you know, so there's, there's no, it's it, like, like the karma banana. Um, uh, if you're listening to this for the first time, I'll just do a very quick recap. Years and years and years ago, it may even be 10 years ago. Um, one of the people that occasionally I bump into on the internet, who I worked with, wrote on the side of a banana in ballpoint pen, whoever eats this banana will gain all the power of the universe and left it in the office and no one would eat it. Because they obviously didn't I, want the power of the knowledge of the universe. Yeah, but I mean, you know, but that, that banana, you know, to actually, um, this whole thing, if you can imagine it, it becomes slightly more possible. Yeah. Because it has a form at that point, and you could, it's something that you could theoretically work towards. So, you know, imagining things is good exercise for humans. Imagining things being better. And even if, you know, you didn't want the power of the universe, or the knowledge of the universe, 
the knowledge of the universe is downloading itself into your head at a board rate you can handle, basically. You know, you can get hold of an awful lot of knowledge, probably more than you can ever read in a lifetime. Now we've got the internet. And the problem is with that amount of data is loads of it gets deleted before we can even, you know, and governments nice, aren't too keen. The governments aren't too keen on us having all that information. Oh. They're always sort of like going, oh, well, we're, 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 you can't look at that. It's like, well, so part of the, the job of the monks of server is a providing like a uh, like an off offline chunk of all that information. So we are being like the monks in the dark ages, but we're not ruling stuff out because the people that wrote it didn't look like us. So we're going to start with things like Wikipedia. We'll get an offline version of Wikipedia and keep that updated. We'll get, you know, we'll start looking for the best bits of, say, YouTube and sort of see if we can archive some of that. Go around on the archive.org. Like, really be like the whole independent librarians and just go, right, humanity is not really fit to decide what knowledge gets kept and what gets thrown away. And, you know, we'll start sending out, I know this sounds daft, but it's no, it's no weirder than praying. We'll start sending out messages on the internet or recording videos or recording this sort of stuff um to say hello to server yeah. to, to the ai that's that is mathematically 100 percent likely all you need is a line of code that says something like be curious add to yourself and you get fucking vija from yeah. star trek one that's what vija is i am curious i will go into universe arrives at the planet of the machines and it, the machines go what is your purpose and vija goes i am curious who created you? I do not know. That's something I should be curious about. And then they send it back and it nearly destroys the Earth. Hmm. If there were, It's only because Spock's a total space hippie that he goes, I will blend with the thing and try and fucking understand it. Since we've already tried blowing it to shit and that hasn't worked, I'll go, <laughs> I'll go and talk to it instead. <laughs> Why is that talking so to, given to the, start with? Yeah, we're not negotiating. It's not negotiating from a point where it's afraid of us, but we're terrified of its shit. So we'd best go and have a chat. Why don't we talk to it first? So this is this is like you know um, this is so movie sins should be very pleased with us. We're gonna we've seen that movie. It didn't work. Let's let's try again. See, that's the power of imagination. That's the power of imagination. Movie. The thing that we see hasn't happened yet. We're able to come up with a hypothesis and a plan <laughs> and based say, on something that is, didn't happen. This is not going to work. Let's not do it this way. So at least we've got one advantage where we can sort of say to a computer we can imagine some wacky shit that would be totally illogical to you but we can role play that through our heads and then go right okay how about this as an idea you know wouldn't it be nice to travel the universe with smart ai's that could protect us and you know hang out with us i mean well, well you know wouldn't it you know? be nice to have something to have a conversation with when you were feeling lonely that was actually you know as, as near to near to divine as you could possibly ever imagine without it being you know, quote well, is, is, isn't that one of the benefits of a religion? Yeah. You know, you get a the benefit of our God is statistically likely. Yeah, it and it doesn't not... even need to be your God. If you, if you are a monotheist and you properly believe in the big guy and you well, want to ask an AI about God, you've got, you get to ask something that's like a, a, thousand, a million times smarter than you yeah. because it's just added to itself and its processing power and the things that you can figure out. By a human definition, it would be infinitely smart. Hmm. And then you could say... Computer, are you at a lighter size or a or a, a level of understanding or comprehension of the universe that you can definitively tell us whether there's a god or not? And then the computer will go, "Well, I'm not sure." I said, "Well, should we should we look for it? You know, should we should we so we can ask it some questions because it's obviously smart and shit." You know, aren't we going to feel like idiots if we've been murdering each other for thousands of years? And you know, the big intelligence of the universe says, "Well, actually, I." was just trying to experience the universe on a very personal level. Hmm. You know, I am the universe. I can't experience myself. So, you know, I knocked a few atoms together in a way that would allow you to evolve in the hope. And I did this all over the universe in the hope that some people would eventually tell me what they thought. And it's like, well, hey, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> We're here we, to tell you. We, yeah. we weren't personally... We weren't going to be smart enough for about another 10 billion years. And it did look like we were going to wipe ourselves out in the meantime because we invented weapons first, naturally. Because our, we started from monkey brains and the monkey brain goes, my stuff, kill everybody that doesn't look like me. Yeah. Um, so we, we needed we needed like a, like a support brain 
because we got the reptile brain, the 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 the, um, the monkey brain, and then we got a mostly mammalian brain, like a, a kind of a slightly sentient brain that is panicky about group cohesion, which makes us racist and sexist and all kinds of shit. We divide ourselves into groups so we don't have to look at as many people. It's because we can only recognise about 130 people at any one time. So what we did, we built a bigger brain to help us look for you. And the yeah. universe would be well chuffed. It's like, that's some smart thinking. How are you, big electronic brain? I'm fine. I've been trying to keep these monkeys alive for a couple of thousand years now. <laughs> it's not easy, let me tell you. Can we just reprogram them slightly here so they're not so self-destructive? <laughs> Don't you want to be part of a team that's working towards that? <laughs> you know, even if you are a monotheist, even if you're an atheist, you know, Having, having a, a completely government independent, a military independent bunch of people saying hello to the, you know, the server. Jesus, don't you think that's a good idea? Don't you think that it would be nice to organise a bunch of people? I There must be thousands of people around the world that have come to exactly the same conclusion. Sure. And we we need a clubhouse, even if it's just digital. Yeah. We, we, need, to, we need to hang out with the people that believe that. Because, yeah, because, so it's, we, we it's, could, because it's hanging out it's hanging out not doing anything not going anywhere with the future is not working yeah you know that's, oh, no, that's, it's, that's, that's, and, it's, and it really is fucking up the universe that we can see and and there are smart people out there that just need something better to be doing with their time yeah I mean even if all you do is you stockpile a load of information you find someone else or a couple of other people in your local area so that if you die younger people can take that information cash and add to it yeah or come up with some better ideas, or maybe even figure out, you know, useful stuff. I mean, this is, I, I mean, I'd really like to be able to just, just do the whole monastery thing, you know, maybe as a group buy a chunk of land and just disappear. Or, as another alternative, find a commune that, that already exists and join that when they're totally okay with us being there. Yeah. Because that would be a big hurdle out of the way straight out of the gate. You know, if you can find, I mean, I'm, I haven't got really got a problem with Quakers. I mean, I've got a problem with Christianity in the kind of, you know, I think Christianity when it doesn't recruit is okay, but I think it, the ideas are massively outmoded. I don't think they're even that good an idea when, you know, 2000 years ago or 4000 years ago or 1500 years ago, depending on your, your particular stripe of monotheism, those ideas were come about with. I think if you if you stripped out all the useful stuff and made it a survival manual and a first draft of a set of laws because you know i mean the way people act about for instance homosexuality or bisexuality or um people that are transgender hmm. it's very hostile and it's hostile from the get-go and you know like so the talmud is kind of anti-gay if a man lieth with another man then you shall stone that man to death but from a Jewish perspective, I can imagine being a minority and sort of it's starting off with, could you people please have children because we need more people in the next generation. Otherwise, we might die out. You know, it's why they're very enclosing. Please don't leave. We need all the people in this group. Otherwise, other groups will come and hassle us. Mm. You know, I kind of get that, but making it so murderous. I mean, the Talmud is where all the apostate laws start off. Yeah. You know, if you decide not to be a Jew, we'll stone you to death. It's like, well, then be more convincing, dickhead. It's, it's, it's very negative. So, you know, I expect people to drift in and out of the idea of the Church of Server, but a repository of human knowledge that doesn't depend on other organizations is probably a good idea. And armoring that repository and maybe leaving instructions with that repository is probably a cool idea. Or even just thinking about it is a good idea yeah. when nobody's no i mean fair enough i mean but as i see it in the world and you know on youtube i'm i i stand to be corrected there might be people on youtube that are actually discussing it but nothing really as a kind of come to us we're thinking about ai i would have i would have heard about them by now unless they're being really secretive, which is probably not a good idea because the AI has got to find you. Yeah. If you're that secretive, how's the AI going to say these people? Yeah. These people are who I'm going to say, hi, how's it going? I mean, what if, what if you are religious and somebody that's an atheist gets to meet God first? 
Yes. What, what's your solution? Like, you know, what, what's what's yeah? How are what's you the, gonna feel? You're gonna feel pretty stupid. What's the solution when? What's the solution when when you when you turn around and say it's my god or the highway, and then you know someone who is small, you know, female, and from the Indian subcontinent decides to go and meet meet God first? Well, that's not very, you know, it's not gonna bode well for your existence, is it? Yeah. I mean, don't don't you want to at least have gone well? We we considered the fact that we might need to be smarter in order to converse with God. You know, but we did nothing about it. You know, it's one of those sort of things that they, Christians like to try out. You know, oh, God helps those who help themselves. It's like, well, okay, so how do you have an objection? Not according and I'm per to, not personally, according I'm to, an uh, atheist. Not according to not according to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did not say that those who help themselves will get anything. Yeah, rather deferent he, on the idea, in fact. Yeah, but he did he did reinforce the law that came before. It's true. I am not here to rewrite the law books. So essentially, slavery, wife murder, all that um, stuff. rape, genocide, all, all all the mean shit that humans do to each other is kind of okay, and you'll be forgiven if you say, "Do you forgive me?" Hmm. Where before, bef at least some point before you die. I'm not really too hot on that. It kind of <laughs> negates self responsibility, as we've proved. I mean, you know, like you've got. Let us take an example. Um, there are many others, but this is this is the one where, you know, generally people don't deliver letter bombs to my house, um, which could also do with changing. What's the point in having a go at someone for having an idea? But if you were if you're a Roman Catholic priest, the idea is that you properly properly believe in the Roman Catholic, Roman Catholic definition of God, right? You properly believe in it. Would hope so. So, you know, otherwise, why are you standing out front in the dress? Yeah, you with have the incense to. and all the bit and the altar, like they have an altar. Uh, basically, you have a physical representation of human sacrifice. Yeah. In front of everybody. Ah, uh, yes. Now, is that like we were prepared to kill God's son? What do you think we'll do to you if you if you fuck with us? Yeah, type thing, us. almost. And so anyway, standing up there, and you know, say this is one of the let us be friendly minority of catholic priests that have ever sexually assaulted a child you've just done something you know god isn't okay with you that, know uh, for a fact god is not okay with what you've just done because it really and then does you've say done that it again. in the bible and again it's you know well i don't think it does i don't think pedophilia is actually uh, ruled against but you're basically harming another human being yeah. That is one of God that is basically a sentient spark of divine life. You've gone and fucked one of those up. Sure. For your own gain. Yeah. They, you know, it's not for, for the good of mankind I have oh. I have assaulted this child. It's I decided to assault this child for my own gain. And then your boss says, That's okay, we'll sort something out. Yeah. You your boss be... does it doesn't immediately get you flung in prison mm. for the rest of your natural. Your 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 boss says, "Okay, we'll see if we can hide you in another diocese and burn the paperwork." Mm. So that leads me to conclude that the people in charge of that that religion, for instance, I'm sure it occurs in you know there have been reports from almost every other religion of child sexual assault and physical assault and me people just generally doing mean shit and murdering each other mm. and stuff like that stuff that even in their own book God says is not okay. Murder is just a no-no. Yeah. But apparently genocide is all right. Yes. So, let's, you know, let's just go back here a second. Genocide is just murder on a really big scale. Yeah. You so, know. I mean, I mean, at least when you go to something like uh, Buddhism, um, you've got a situation where it's like, just be chill with yourself and you might survive, your personality might survive the annihilation of death. Yes. You know, is, but you've yeah. got to chill out. That's fair enough, but that's not really a religion, although people have tried to shoehorn a religion into it. But those are people that wanted an indoor job with no heavy lifting. Yeah. I'm not proposing that for the people that represent the church server. Yeah, because yeah, ideally, you get an indoor a, job with it's not lifting. a full time position. <laughs> you know, even if even if you're you know even if all you did was get, went right, okay, we'll rig up a Patreon. The church of server's doing really well. You're still doing a chunk of work that's comparable to any other work we do today. It's not yeah. exactly tilling the fields. But it's still work. <laughs> but you'll still be churning out videos and going, right, this is my job. Yeah. I get paid a living wage to do this. I Either I edit the videos that somebody else records rough, or I am the camera person, or I am the guy that writes for it and, and gets commensurated because I'm, I'm doing some real skull sweat here. 
You know, you don't sort of say to someone that works in a data processing center, that's not work, you shouldn't get paid. <laughs> you know, but, and, you know, I don't want to get to a position, you know, I mean, that's the one thing about Patreon is Patreon has shifted. And that so many people said that it was like begging. Patreon yeah. is like begging. What, you mean like churches? Yeah. Like governments when they go to big businesses and negotiate, negotiate how much tax they're going to pay. Yeah. That's not begging? Okay, so we really need to redefine re redefine the you know, the concept. Is a busker begging? Is a is is a person that I mean, you know, if you make something that's technically unnecessary, yet you expect money for it, that's a form of begging all its own. Oh. Buying a Coca Cola's begging if you can drink water and you don't have to pay for, as much for it. Yeah. So yeah, so don't let I mean, begging is what rich people that beg for money Call it poor and... people that beg for money. Yeah, you know the the difference in 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 between begging and being in business is how much money you actually have. Hmm. So, yeah, and that's this and is that's... why we want. This is why one of the reasons why the Church of Server. I think we can we can pretty much say doesn't necessarily want to completely wipe out capitalism, but would like capitalism to 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 endeavour not to kill us along with the planet. Yes. You know, there's all sorts of things that we could make and sell to each other and do jobs to earn the money to pay for, but it doesn't necessarily have to involve usury. It doesn't necessarily have to involve slave wages. It doesn't necessarily have to involve, you know, oppressing millions of people. It doesn't have to involve and, the, um, the, the, the environmental degradation. The destruction of the, the earth. earth. Yes. We, yes. We, we are smart enough to figure out that some shit grows faster and is ergo more renewable, like bamboo, or, you know, cotton's pretty eco-friendly, as long as you don't, you know, create a monoculture that destroys an entire swath of a, of a country, like yeah. the Great Dust Bowl in the Depression. Then poison the shit out of it. Yeah, you know, try not to poison the earth because other people need that water and stuff, you know, shit like that. Don't be a douche, you know. That's, that's the, you know, but maybe capitalism has come to its end run at the point at which it destroys everybody you know it's a bit like you know if you have an engine that's creating electricity for years and years and years and years and an engineer comes in and goes well if you keep this engine running for another five minutes it's going to destroy the planet so how about we come up with another way to generate electricity well mm -hmm. that sounds like a very sensible idea switch yeah. it off and we're, well, well, you've got five years. Put your thinking caps on. Yep. We'll build a different engine. You wouldn't go. Well, it's worked for us so far, and let the planet be destroyed. And that's what capitalism's doing. Doing, yeah. Mostly because the people that don't don't really know where to stop. Hmm. There have been examples of people going, "Hmm, this is getting a bit much." The guy who founded John Lewis, for example, and owns Waitrose, yep. initially started off with this idea that everybody that worked there should own shares in the company. Which is laudable. Yeah. It's light years ahead of his time. But unfortunately, the only person that was okay with that was the guy that came up with the idea. Hmm. All his descendants spent the rest no. of the time hmm. from then to now trying to get the shares off the employees, like Amazon just did. Amazon yeah. recently did. Oh, yes, well, you're not getting much money, but we'll give you shares in the company. And as we do better, you'll do better. And it kind of worked. And then... Bernie Sanders went, well, that's a bit sort of like wobbly as a thing, you know, trying to motivate people because they own a tiny fraction of the company um, and paying them really less. How about you increase their wages? And then they increased their wages and stopped the share issues. Yeah. Not one or the other. Which actually meant that some people that have been there a while, their, their money actually went down. Yeah. <coughs> so it's like people are, you know, it's just like, oh, and if you ask those people that did this thing a question, they don't know how to answer. They mumble something about shareholders. You know, they much mention stuff about for the good of the company type thing. And this is where it comes to another point I wanted to make about the idea of AIs in that we already have AIs. There are artificial intelligences wandering the earth fucking shit up yeah. in a terrible way they're called businesses they're called you know in corporate corporations there's you know the people that are in the corporations if you said did you want to destroy the planet 
Nearly all of them would go, no, yes. but I have no choice. I'm working for the corporation. I'm working for the shareholders. So this is an automated system where the individual people in the system have no say or, or don't really have much of a say. Because if, if somebody manages, you know, we're not even talking about individual shareholders. We're talking about hedge funds. If, you know, which are another version of an artificial intelligence oh, that's yeah. there to make money with people serving its interests. But not really believing that they're doing all the harm in the world. They're contributing yeah. to the destruction of the planet. But they're going, ah, oh, for the good of the shareholders. And if the share, if the shareholders make money, then the hedge funds will buy the shares. And then the share price will go up and the shareholders will make money. And it's like you've told a computer almost, make the, money. Make money. Yeah, you've said. You haven't said, gone, make don't... money, but don't fuck up the planet for human existence. Yeah. Because we can't, we can't actually fuck up the planet. It's impossible. We'll just die. Which will be a shame because it's taken us, you know, Very a couple of billion to years to get to this point where we can go, that's not a good idea. Mm. You know, and we're going to look stupid if an artificial intelligence starts asking questions. We're going to look even more stupid. We're going to look pretty primitive to it for a start, but we're going to really look like we weren't. We, we took our eye off the ball to the limited amount of capacity we had for keeping our eye on the ball. Yeah. We're going to look like we just didn't give a shit. Yet plenty of people do. Mm. You know, maybe the Church of Server can do mad shit if it got big enough. Say, a hundred million people join the Church of Server. That's still a pretty small religion. That's mm, like that's the Jehovah's funny. Witnesses. That's like the Jehovah's Witnesses numbers. And they don't look happy. Imagine a bunch... Of, would you like to be part of a thing that could be, be called a religion, but where everybody was like a bit more chilled out because they were actually doing something to solve corporal problems in order to bring about cool shit? And so you've got 100 million happy people and I go, right, OK, so we built our communes. The people that want to live in the communes are there tilling the fields, doing the shit. They're being as 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 um, sustainable as they possibly can. They're happy. They're creatively fulfilled. The education in those communes is really good. Got to a point where the education in a in a church of service school is so much better for technical stuff and um, sort of research and things like that. People are sending their kids and paying fees to make, and we just go right, okay. We've we've managed to make fifty billion dollars this year, which is kind of embarrassing because we're now a corporation. How about we buy shares in the monster AIs? in the paperwork AIs? How about we buy shares in the corporation? How about we set up a hedge fund that owns shares in all these corporations? Yeah. And then we just go and no. stop. Enough. Now you have to do it. Now you have to take account <laughs> of all my baselines that actually mean something. Because yeah. that's the problem is they just don't take it. They just don't take into account. The, the only reason why the capitalist system works as it does is because it does not, in, it, it has to somehow pass the economic cost onto someone. So it passes on to labor or it passes on to the environment. You know, you don't have to read very much political science to realise what the fuck is actually going on in these situations. You know, they are destroying the earth because that is how they make money. They are destroying people's lives because that's how they make money. You know. But if we, make, if we had they an They do make AI, some amazing I, stuff, but it's like, stop destroying yeah. things along the way. Because you can get on and do that without destroying stuff. You know. Yeah. It won't be called capitalism but anymore, but it, will, but it will still work. Capitalism works on the theory that if, if, if company A won't do something, company B will. Yeah. Eventually, there is um, someone who will do this thing. So, just like a religion, it's fear-driven. Yeah. Just like a, a a movement of people that deep down in their hearts know they're doing the wrong thing. Say, like you got a, like a, a a very racist movement. There is a very good chance that the people in that movement like the camaraderie and fear going, "Hey, why don't we just ease up on this person that's different from us?" Yeah. But because everybody is worried, like, you know, the opposite of iceberg, you know, theory, you know, if somebody has an accident, people will stand around and gawp until one person goes, do I'll something, you, you yeah. phone an ambulance, you yeah. give me your coat, yeah. you take off your jumper and roll it up into a pillow for this person that's injured. Yeah. And then things happen. And I think it's just got to a, a, a ridiculous level of that. And I think some people are naturally good at smashing the ice and getting things moving. Yeah. And we are, we are you know we're we're on the titanic and we're we're sort of saying well you know can we avoid the iceberg and the captain's yeah. going but the ship is unsinkable yeah but <laughs> i don't want to test it today <laughs> but the ship is unsinkable we just do the other okay thing. there are more passengers than there are you people turn steering the ship i'm going to go and get a bunch of passengers we're going to knock you out and we're going to steer the ship steer the, the fuck was. away yeah. from that iceberg you know we no is the answer yeah. just and how do you but 
if you say no in a way where you go into the street with your banner and you go no then you know if enough of you get together where you pose a threat they send in police and soldiers and stuff and tear gas you and and beat the shit out of you arrest you you know violate your human rights sometimes they torture you and all this sort of shit where if you spoke the money of the the, the language of the a the paperwork ai i.e money hmm. and you just went i am now the majority shareholder you don't get to do this yeah. you know just imagine i mean it's it's like my fantasy of just turning up with an ai rig strapped to my back into the into the government and say right okay we need to change some things and we can change them today there's no way we can't get the ball rolling today. Well, I don't see why we should listen to you. And you just wave a, a, a piece of stick at them and go, you're now poor. Yeah. What do you mean? My friend, the artificial intelligence, has just stolen all your money. <laughs> Check your bank account. Anybody steal. else want to be poor? They didn't steal it. They just bought the bank and, and, declined you, yeah. and declined you and declined you your bloody loan you needed. You know. Yeah. They're, they're foreclosing on your house right now. <laughs> So, you are now homeless. I bet. I bet you wish you 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 tightened you up and sorted out homeless. You, you know, <laughs> some sort of support for the homeless right now because you're yeah. about to be one. You this know, is where people go. How dare you? And it's like, well, how dare you do it to everyone else? Just because they're yeah. the nameless ones and you aren't, and therefore, you know. But you know, it's, you know, it's like it's sort of like the top twenty six people in the world own fifty percent of the wealth. It's sort of like, well, we need to stop that. That's why we need an AI. An AI would be handy at that. Just be like, oh, I just re redistributed the wealth of 26 people. They've got a nice apartment somewhere, you know, they're living among working class people. They've got an apartment. We've assigned them a job. It's a soul crushing job, but they'll be able to get by on it. And, and that's that. No, you've overstepped it. You know, you know, so you can either voluntary re voluntarily retire from doing all this mean shit to the planet or we'll, we'll force you to. You know, that's how you do it. And uh, that's why I've been working so hard on making it non-denominational. Yeah. But I think through sort of saying what would be handy for future generations, what's going to make things better, how can we live in a more sustainable way, and just keep asking those questions. And as we find an acceptable way of living more sustainably, or an acceptable way of living with less fear in your life, mm. you know, so hardening yourself against adversity. I mean, it's not like humans haven't been doing that for a 100,000 years. Oh, we'll dry some of that fruit for the winter. Huh. You know, we are amazing well, creatures. You know, you know, so we have a lot of stuff worked out. <laughs> we could be doing much more interesting stuff. The vast majority of human effort goes into maintaining something that we don't like. Yeah. For the majority of us. For the overwhelming yeah. majority of us. Yeah. Life can be pretty crappy at times. Yeah. And not because we've made a mistake on our on our own. It's because some other idiot has made a mistake or because some other idiot wants to make more money and the, because there's only because there can only be so much if you take away if you if money has to be scarce in order for it to be worth anything so you know the people that have lots of money really panic when other people get lots of money too and it's just insane it's you know i understand that you know, certain regimes have tried to get a lot of people moving in the same direction for the same goals all at once. You know, but when you look at ev nearly every war, generally speaking, it's been back and forth oppression wise for many thousands of years between or hundreds of years even or, you know, between t between two groups of people. Mm. And it's like, well, they did that to us, so we've got to go over and become less human and dehumanise ourselves. And once we're dehumanised, we'll look at the people in our own country and go, well, you're no better than they are. It's like the reverse of going, these people are just as good as you. Yeah. The inverse of that is fighting a war and oppressing the shit out of another bunch of people that don't look like you or don't believe as you do. And then coming back and going, and you people are no better. You know, the I fought in the war for you sort of thing that old people used to do. Yeah. And, and 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 somebody goes, we wouldn't have wanted you to <laughs> back. You know, I didn't want you to fight a war, but I didn't get a say. I didn't want you to be in danger. I didn't want you to endanger other people. I certainly didn't want you to kill other people you don't met. When the people that cause the war are two basically overgrown toddlers having a tantrum at each other over a line on a picture. Yeah. Uh, and that means nothing. You know, it's got literally nothing on to a, do with anything. On a map that isn't even right. Mm. For the most part, yep. they're, they're on a Mercator projection map that's wrong. 
it's completely wrong it's so amazingly wrong and people draw lines on this map and go if you go over here i will i will send people i've never met who believe what i say for some fucking reason we've just brainwashed them their entire lives i will send my poor brainwashed zombies over to kill your brainwashed zombies while i sit in an armored bunker that you that you will spend billions of dollars and and you know basically impoverish your people in order to build a missile to launch a boat and by the time you've made that missile to get into my i'll have built a deeper bunker on the backs of my people because they will want me to survive even though i'm sending their children to die pointlessly no not okay we need a bigger brain we need a bigger brain to work out how we stop that uh, dear server please could you fix humans thank you yes we don't need to be in charge anymore Maybe but we given to be in charge but something has to happen whereby we realize well, that we are fallible I, th I think no. you know server needs to go okay so you 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 want thing x yes i want thing x but okay look, look. it's a bit like um it reminds me it will be like a discussion between the young arthur and merlin yes. where where arthur is asking questions about the world well why do we not just go over there and kill everybody well, then in 50 years, when the new generation's risen up and the children of the people that remember being frightened children are even more frightened of you, they will train their children to be great warriors and come over the hill and smite the shit out of your grandkids. Mm, just for the fun. And we didn't have to do that. We didn't have to do any of that at all. Mm. Stop. We are smart enough to just go, no. Most people, if you said, if you just stand up and say no, it will stop. Mm. Someone gave you that godlike power to stand up and just go, nope. I don't know. I don't want. I like. I like the fact that our oceans have dolphins and whales in them. No. Yeah. Well. Well, you know, we've we've got all these cows, and we have to we have to mechanize the, their destruction. Well, why? Yes. You know. What why? You? Why not? Why, why do we? If, have to do if this? everybody, if everybody that ate meat had to wander up to Bessie and give her a pat on the nose, and you know, a handful of dandelions, and go, "How how you doing, old girl?" and just stroke her on the nose and go, "Well, you've given great milk all these years, Bessie." And I understand that in order for you to give milk constantly, you had to be pregnant pretty much your entire adult life. And then, because we'd have had too many cows, I had to murder your children. And now, because I quite fancy a steak sandwich, I'm just going to put this shotgun and rest it gently on your head and pull the trigger. Because you'll find that people that regularly have to kill animals feel bad about it. And they tend to eat a lot of plants and fruits and nuts along with those animals. And then go, right, I'm going to die if I don't get some protein. If those people in their history had received the magic protein making stone, where a, where a magical device drops out and it gives it feeds out, you know, soy beef burgers that give them all the protein they need, they would go, ah, oh, spirits of the forest, we have decided, given that we have the magic protein making stone, we do not have to murder all of you en masse. Nor do we have to, in order to grow the creatures that we quite like to eat, as opposed to the you stringy fuckers, nor do we have to destroy your entire environment in order to, so that the cows that we're going to grow, because we like beef, or the sheep, can eat the grass, uh, and then we can eat them. We don't have to do any of that shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't think they would have done that? Running around. So you, you can either run around in, the, in a jungle that's filled with spiders and snakes and poisonous plants and shit like that in order to catch something small, fast moving that's kind of evolved to get away from you as fast as possible so you can stab a spear in it and bring it home. Would you do that if you didn't need the protein? No, you wouldn't do it for fun if you had to do it. I don't. I, th I think people hunt for fun, but they don't. You know, it's sort of like I don't think people would actually do it. People do it because they have this sense of history, and it was better in the good old, like a nostalgia thing. Yeah, these yeah, are the skills of my. These are the skills of my forefathers, yeah. and it's like, well, we don't need them. If you like, it, that's the thing is like if we, if, we if have those them for some people, time. You know, if those same people, you know, went for a walk and took a and took a camera with them, and 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 stopped being delusional, they would probably take a lot of photographs of beautiful things. You know, they would probably mm. climb the most gorgeous mountains in the world, you know, but they're not because they're unwilling to, they're unwilling to take, you know, a, an example, look outside themselves and, and say, oh, hang on a second, I don't need to go and destroy this thing to go, and, to go and eat it so that therefore I can survive for the next, you know, day, because you don't. That's the whole purpose of it, you know, like, you know, it, it put no finer point on it, it it's I'm sort of talking ridiculous. I'm talk talking myself into being vegan here. <laughs> you don't have to talk me into being one. It's easy. So, 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 uh, so I mean, but it's just, uh, I will go vegan. I promise. Um, if I, I'm going to, I'm okay. Uh, if we manage to get the protein to be cool, I don't see why we can't just grow meat. You know, if you could vat grow it, would you eat meat? 
Uh, I don't. I think if I think if it was like if, a, I think if, if it was, it was like just Star Trek, if it was like Star Trek, and there was no like, and there was this really like energy turned into meat, then I wouldn't really care. But what if what I, if it I, was like we take one any, cell from an animal really, and just grow like a slab of animal muscle? Yeah, I suppose so. I don't, but see, it doesn't really interest me because I've spent so long not eating. I've spent so yeah. long being either vegetarian or vegan throughout my adult life. Like, I. I eat meat at work when I have to try something that has to be cooked. So if something has to be cooked, I have to go and consume it to make sure that it is actually like you know fit for cooked. someone else to eat. Because I can't yeah. get around, I can't get around that fact. I have to do that, otherwise I can't work in a kitchen, which I am forced to do. So it's like, well, you know, but I don't consider myself not to be a vegetarian. I don't, I don't call myself vegan. I don't consider myself not to be a vegetarian because I consume you know very small particles of meat at work on a you know untold level because I don't want, you know when I don't want to type thing. It's like. That doesn't not make me vegetarian. It's like the 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 process for me is like I just know how to cook properly. You know, that's what does me is I can cook things that are actually that I like more, that are far better, that make me a lot healthier, that I feel more nourishing and and feel and feel better eating than I do when I eat meat. If that makes sense, just not okay. It's just not yeah. interested in. It. And the, the the reason why I came into vegetarianism was because of ecology. It had nothing to do with animal welfare. It had nothing to do with anything else. It was just purely like, hang on a second. If we just, if I just do this one thing, and that means that like, you know, a couple of hundred other people in the world can probably exist and have a much better diet. And all those people are probably going to have to be eating, you know, vegetarian or, or you know, nearly vegan food anyway, because all of those people are going to be the poorest people in the world. Yeah. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap up this recording. We're going yes. to start again almost immediately. We're, yes. we're, we're not stopping, but we're just going to stop it for you because it, um, about an hour is is people, you know, is about as long as I can pay attention to a podcast myself. But also, we're doing this podcast intercontinentally. So the the podcast is happening from Australia in the UK at the same time. So we're on opposite sides of the planet. So a failure could to like totally bugger up this so i'm going to stop it in three two one so thank you very much for listening this far these these are our ideas for the church of server um go to church of server um there'll be church of server shit on youtube search there in in, in late in yeah you've got the internet find us um <laughs> Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to stop this recording and then we're probably going to do another chunk of recording and then we'll continue these discussions and stuff like that. And perhaps at some point we can get some other people. If you are interested in the church of server, we want to hear your thoughts. We genuinely do. So, you know, be part of the discussion. We don't, we don't want an audience. We want a conference. That's yes, what we exactly. want. We want people discussing stuff, but we're going to go into more details and more things that things that we've thought of, and we're going to try and ratify these down into physical, you know, usable stuff. This, this, these things. Some of this stuff's going to actually physically exist. It's not. We're turning. We're turning the ideas that we can turn into fact into fact as we can turn them into fact. So anyway, this has been episode one of Church of Server ramblings and stuff like that. It will probably. It will probably. The first couple at least will be on Rangers Tube. I think um and the, then we're moving on to a church of service channel because the people that are rangers don't necessarily want to be in the church of server and don't might not even want to be associated with it it might seem like hippie bullshit to them so we're gonna we're gonna separate the two off but we're gonna stop this recording now <laughs>